Hello, welcome to everyone in this video. This is the part 4 for the solution of nuclear and particle physics DSCP1 for the University of Calcutta for semester 5 of physics honors of the year 2021. We already covered 3 part up to question number 5. You can see this is the total question paper. Uh, this is question number 1 which already solved in part 1. This is question number 2 which solved in part 2. And this is question number 3, 4 and 5 cover up in the part 3. And this is the last part of this uh, answer series of 2021. Uh, question number 6, 7 and this 8 will be covered up in this session, right? So if you do not watch the previous lecture, you can go through the description box. Link are given there, right? Uh, you can go through the uh, this channel. You can get defined fees related video. Uh, some theoretical parts, some problem solution, etc. etc. Right. So let's start today discussion of question number six, seven, and eight. At the very beginning, you can see the question number six A, which says consider a gas detector of coaxial cylindrical geometry with anode wire of radius A, anode that's been positive <coughs> terminal, and the cathode that is negative terminal with radius B. So that the maximum radial electric field inside the detector is this. So the inside, within the inside, the elect uh, detector, the maximum electric field will be like that. Where is the potential applied to the anode with respect to cathode? Why is the anode wire made very thin? <coughs> okay. So if you consider this is a cylindrical, uh, cylindrical gas chamber, and this is the anode, and this is the cathode. That is the wall of this chamber is the cathode. Now, the radius of this anode is A and the radius of this cathode is B, the wall of this chamber. So, what will we, we can say that is the electric field into area, that is the Gauss theorem, is Q by epsilon naught. So, area is the 2 pi R L, L is the distance and R is the radius. So, this will be the electric field. Now, you can find out the potential V equal to E dot dr, put this value E and integrating this, you will be get these things. So, uh, again, if you substitute this one, you can easily find out that is the Q by epsilon naught and Q is nothing but you can see Q is nothing but 2 pi r epsilon naught e. Uh, or you can see from here, we can see from here, you can write down that is V equal to these two things. So, use this one here. Okay. So, this Q equal to 2 pi epsilon naught L into V divided by this one this epsilon naught here so e equals to this one v by r ln v by a now what will be the maximum value this will be maximum when r is minimum and the minimum r is nothing but the a this <coughs> uh, point cannot penetrate to the within the anode wire so the maximum value will be like that okay so anode wire uh, so this proved happen here now the question is what is the uh, why the anode wire made thin so you can see this, in this relation, this uh, R equals to A. So if A is very low, then maximum energy will be uh, high. So for, uh, sorry, this is not energy, electric field. The electric field will be high. That means uh, within that region, the electric field will be very high. This high electric field actually helps to collect the charge which are generated due to ion implantation of the gas. Okay. When these uh, radioactive elements are entered within the gas chamber, they produce the ions and these ions are collected by this uh, anode or electron are collected by this anode. If the electric field in this region is very high, oh, oh, the, which will be possible if we take the radius of the anode is very low. If this is very thin, this is the radius will be very low, then the electric field at this region is very high. This helps to separate out the electron and the positive charge and which flow the current in the outer circuit and we will obtain the uh, or, or the, we can count the uh, particles which are injected within the gas chamber. Go to the next question. This question says so that the variation of the number of ions pairs formed in a gas detector for alpha and beta particle with the anode potential uh, graphically in a single plot mark different region in the plot. So this is a for uh, alpha and this is a for beta particle and you can see this is written here in this ionization chamber, this is proportional counter, this is Jajan Muller, this is limited uh, proportionality and the, in this region this will be discharged. So this is the 
region or the applied potential. Next question. What do you mean by resolving time of GM counter? Actually, in this resolving time, the <coughs> counter cannot count the accurate ions particle okay so in this time the uh, counter not count the ions fall within the counter is called resolving time during this time counter is inefficient it cannot measure the accurate ions okay <coughs> actually in this region uh, in this time uh, the electrons are flow within this region and uh, these uh, uh, anode cannot collect the further uh, electron produced within that region okay next question is a gm counter has a resolving time that is 100 microsecond and what will be the actual count rate if the observed count rate is 2000 this is the observed count rate and you know the actual count rate is nothing but observed count rate by 1 minus n tau n is the capital n is the actual count rate at small n and small n is the uh, observed count rate okay tau is the uh, resolving time so if you put these things you can easily find out this value will be 2500 okay this is the observed and this is the measured or actual next question says consider the reaction this is the reaction gamma and <coughs> the titanium and hydrogen okay the energy of incident gamma is like that kinetic energy produced in this process will be like that and the given mass of hydrogen and deuterium and hydrogen will be like that what is the mass of neutron so in this relation mass energy equivalence says that the energy of gamma initial plus mass energy mass equivalence energy is like that and this is mass equivalent energy uh, this is the gamma <coughs> energy this is mass equivalent energy of hydrogen this is mass equivalent energy of neutron so if you difference these two things you get this relation and then put this value in mev and this mass in u so u can be changed into mev by this <coughs> 931 multiplication so from this calculation you will be obtain the mass of the neutron next give a rough estimate difference in binding energy of 3 1 titanium and helium considering the coulomb term only so the binding energy is nothing but the <coughs> proportional with the atomic number and the coulomb parts only other contribution symmetry contribution parity contribution <coughs> uh, surface contribution are neglected here so if you consider this coulomb <coughs> contribution the difference of binding energy will be like that so this is for a a is nothing but the mass number which is three and this is coulomb uh, this one and this one so for for hydrogen this is one this is z is one here written and for this z is two <coughs> written here so a c into this one so put this value finally you will obtain this relation okay next uh i think clear this one this is the calculation part you can take this calculation part next a fixed frequency cyclotron has its radius this is the radius of the cyclotron and this is the magnetic field the operational frequency will be nothing but v by 2 pi r that is the q v by 2 pi m so q by m given here charge to mass ratio is 9.58 10 to the 7 <coughs> And B is 1.5 Tesla and this is 2 pi, you will be obtained 22.87 megahertz. <laughs> and the maximum kinetic energy of this particle half m v n square, maximum velocity. This is nothing but Q V by R M by M, the whole square. So this M <coughs> one cancel out Q by M and this is Q. <coughs> uh, B R M square. So B is 1.5, RM is 1 and this is uh, this Q is multiplied here but uh, to convert into electric volt unit you can divide it, you, you, you divided the charge of this electron and charge of the electron <coughs> and proton are the <coughs> same in magnitude but difference in size. Okay, so this calculation gives you this amount of mega electron volt. Next question, what is the resonant particle? Actually, resonant particle is the extremely short lifetime phenomena associated with the subatomy called hadron. Hadron with a short lifetime is called the resonant particle. Next is explain the eightfold way in reference to uh, baryon duplet. Actually, in baryon duplet, which, this is the eightfold particle written here. 
so this actually gives you the information of this one actually uh, so you need to draw this one right down here next uh, why this reaction never observed actually in this reaction you can see this strangeness number of this particle is minus 2 and this is 0 so strangeness particle is not conserved here baryon particle is uh, conserved here so uh, also there is the strangeness is not equal to 0 delta b equal to 0 <coughs> this is not conserved not conserved this is conserved also uh, since uh, since the strangeness number particle strangeness Conserved. Since the strangest number is conserved here, not does not conserve here, so this reaction cannot observe. Next question: Check whether the both the strangest and the third component of the isospin remain conserved in the following reaction. <coughs> so for strangest number, you can see this is zero, this is minus one, this is minus one, so this is not conserved. This is also not conserved, so this is not possible. In this reaction, you can see this changes number also concerns and even I3 also concerns. <coughs> Actually, to attend this question, you need to remember this number of this particle. Okay. So you can see for strong interaction, this term must to be uh, conserved, and this is happening in <coughs> reaction two. So reaction one cannot possible. This reaction two can possible strong interaction. So I think clear if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box. This is all about me. This is my contact detail. You can connect me with this telegram channel. And this is my YouTube channel details. Go to this channel. You will get different related videos, some mathematics. Like this session. If you learn something from this session, share this video to your friends either he or she also get benefit from this video. Subscribe this channel. If you need this channel, those already subscribed. Thanks for subscription. Hit the bell icon to get notification of our video. So take care. We will meet you in the next video as soon as possible. Thank you.